There's some roller coasters that you just get off and you're like, that was perfect. The ride has no flaws whatsoever. No, no, wrong clip. They go, go to the next. There you go, there you go. Today I'm gonna try to design a roller coaster that fits into that classification. And for this video, it's gonna be an Intamin Blitz coaster. If you guys like this video enough, I'll make this a series. Maybe do one episode with an RMC iBox or a Mach Hyper or something like that. So what makes a perfect roller coaster? I would say it needs to be comfortable. The layout could be amazing, but if the track is rough, the ride has bad restraints or both, then it's not as fun and enjoyable. It needs to look cool. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. Good drop. Usually my favorite element on any given ride is the drop drop, so it better be good. It needs a variety of good elements, the airtime elements, inversions, then keep the filler track to a minimum. Strong forces, but also a variety of forces achieved through a variety of elements, like I mentioned before. Some airtime should be strong ejectors, some can be floater, and also there can be some strong positive Gs in some spots, but it can't be like that for the whole ride or else you'll be in an Intimidator 305 situation. On the flip side, the ride needs to be intense. It should have some moments that will wow even the most experienced coaster riders, which again goes back to the choice of elements. Duration. The ride needs to not be over in 15 seconds. It should last a pretty long while, but it shouldn't be too long. It shouldn't feel like there's wasted track, you know? It needs to have a good setting. I'll put the ride in a forest next to a lake. A really unique idea that I have never done before. I was gonna say that it needs to be reliable. Well, I mean, it should be reliable, but I already had my mind set on making an Intamin launch for this video, so that would kind of overturn the whole thing. So Intamin has a few different models of launch coasters, and today we're gonna utilize their LSM launch coaster, specifically the new generation Blitz coaster like Velocicoaster and Pantheon. So to determine what elements to use, I looked at the four major modern Intamin launch coasters, the two I mentioned before, as well as Taiga and Tutatis. However you say that, I'm an American, sorry. I'll just be looking at the standout elements here. So Pantheon, you got the zero G roll, you got the swing launch with the spike, you got the top hat, the outer banked hill, the stall, and the wave turn at the end. For Taiga, you got the zero G winder, the top hat after the second launch, the stall, little speed bump after the stall, and you got the twisted hill, the rapid transitions that are like elevated and drops back down, Got that half camelback that banks out halfway through, and then the final barrel roll. And for two Tatis, you got the cutback, the swing launch, and the spike, the top hat with the brakes at the top, the stall, the camelback, that little twisted hill low to the ground, and then the wave turn, the barrel roll, and then the double up into the brakes. And then for Velocicoaster, you got the Immelman and Dive Loop at the start, you got the twisted hill, you got the top hat after the second launch, you got the stall, the wave turn, the outer banked hill, the Mosasaurus roll, and then the twisted hill right after the Mosasaurus roll. So now we're going to put all of these elements into categories because we don't want two of the same unique element in one ride. I mean, that's fine for common elements like speed hills, camelbacks, or twisted hills, but you don't want two outer banks or two stalls in the same ride unless they have really different shaping or something like that. So for the first inversion, we have Pantheon 0G Roll, Taiga's 0G Winder, the cutback on Totatis, and then Velocicoaster with its Illman and Dive Loop combination. For the first half elements, we have Pantheon and Totatis with their off-axis bunny hills, Taiga has those rapid transitions transitions, and then Velocicoaster as the twisted airtime hill, the airtime into turn transition, and then the outer banked hill. For the second launch sequence, it's between the swing launch from Pantheon and Totatis, and then the traditional launch from Taiga and Velocicoaster. Each of these coasters has a top hat with Pantheon having that classic top hat with a beyond vertical drop, Taiga with the sort of twisted drop, Totatis with the very steep drop that has a break on the descent, and then Velocicoaster with the descent that's closer to about 80 degrees. Similar to the top hat, each of these four coasters has a zero-g stall on them, all with their different slight variations. For the outer bank, we have Pantheon, which is really large and sustained, but not as forceful, and then Velocicoaster with the more low-to-the-ground outer banked hill that's very snappy. And then for the twisted hill, we have Taiga with the larger version, and then Totatis and Velocicoaster with a more low-to-the-ground speedy twisted hill. For the wave turns between Pantheon, Totatis, and Velocicoaster, and then of course the final barrel roll, we have Taiga, Totatis, and Velocicoaster, and then we have a few more miscellaneous elements like Pantheon with the rapid transitions, Taiga with its speed hill, elevated rapid transitions, and that half camelback thing, Tototis with the banked speed hill, the camelback, and the double up, and then Velocicoaster with its overbanked turn and the little speed hill. Alright, now it's time for the fun stuff. So we're gonna start off with a nice 50 mile an hour launch, kind of directly taken from Velocicoaster. This will give it the speed it needs for a good solid first half of the ride before we really kick it up a notch in the second half. All of these coasters have an inversion right after the launch, so I think it's a good idea to keep that going. The idea here was to combine the weird shaping of 
Tygo's first inversion with the airtime that exits the Immelman on Velocicoaster. So riders get some great hang time on the first half of that element before back row riders get ejector on the way down. It then goes into that airtime slash turn combination that Velocicoaster has, and then an airtime hill. You'll turn around and go through these back-to-back -back switchback hills, kind of like the middle section of the Mega Light coasters. After this, we needed to get back to the area around where the first launch ends, because that's where I want that switch track to go. There wasn't enough room for a classic airtime hill, so I kind of went with this double up you see here. Then you have some quick back and forth transitions that lead into the switch track, kind of like a mini version of those transitions after the stall on Pantheon. So now we go to the switch track and we can do a dip and airtime hill before the top hat, kind of like what Totitis does. But the problem in the design was the backward spike, because the first inversion was right where I wanted to put that. No huge problem though, because we can just have a little turn that goes under the first inversion and then there's the spike. Because I chose Pantheon to model the top hat after, I wanted to put a 95 degree drop on it, so there's no doubt that the back cars would get some insane airtime going down this, pulling negative 1.2 Gs. For the stall, I wanted to have the transitions in and out of the stall similar to Taiga, but the upside down portion can be elongated similar to Pantheon. After this, I had the train turn around and head into a massive switchback hill, pulling negative 0.6 Gs, and this element just looks really cool with the Intamin Triangle Spine track. Then we can have it go into the Camelback, which you can really never go wrong with on an Intamin coaster. This one will give you a very strong negative 1.1 Gs in the front and back rows. Back to the more unique elements, we can have a Velocicoaster style outer bank hill, which which gives you a crazy transition back and forth, paired with negative 0.9 Gs of strong ejector airtime. So after a set of crazier elements, let's have a slightly less forceful Totatis style wave turn. That'll give you some sweet sideways airtime. It's not pure floater airtime, but it's actually stronger at negative 0.4 Gs. This element turns around into a maverick-like load the ground transition, which is a great fit on a coaster like this. This wild element will take you into the finale, which starts off with a strong speed hill. For this one, I kind of had in mind this speed hill that Taiga has after the stall, which I've heard is crazy. This one probably isn't quite as strong though, pulling around negative 0.7 and negative 0.8 Gs, but it's really just a transition element before the final inversion, kind of like how Velocicoaster has that little airtime pop before the Mosasaurus roll. The Mosasaurus roll is known for being an extreme gut punch of an element, and it's always great when you can end the ride with a bang. This one has the strongest negative g-force on the ride, with negative 1.4 g's as you're just spiraling through the roll. And then there's one final strong pop of airtime into the brake run for good measure. Alright, final judgment. Does this ride fit my categories? Let's find out. Is it comfortable? Well, I haven't been on a coaster with these lap bars. People who have ridden them have made comparisons to Intamin T-Bar and B&M clamshell restraints, those two being my favorite restraints of a coaster I've been on, so I'd say it's a pretty safe bet that this would be a really comfortable ride. Does it look cool? The new gen train design from Intamin is pretty awesome, and you can't go wrong with a blue and gray color scheme. Does it have a good drop? I would consider a 95 degree drop that pulls negative 1.2 Gs in the back to be a pretty darn good drop. Variety of elements. I mean, it has a great variety of large and small elements. It has different airtime strength throughout the ride also, and even the angle that the track is banked while experiencing airtime is varied. Does it have good forces? Each valley pulls at least 3 Gs, and the ride maxes out at 3.9 at the bottom of the first drop. Is intense. The strong forces and great pacing make up a very intense experience filled with standout elements. For the setting, it has a nice setting next the lake, but I can't get too crazy with the terrain and scenery or else my computer will explode. Reliability? Well, uh, I don't know man, just go watch the POV right now.